We now interrupt your entertainment to bring you the daily dose of weird news. I'm Darren Marlar. This episode is brought to you by the audiobook Could It Be True? Volume 1 Urban Legends by Cindy Parmenter, narrated by Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample of this creepy and true audiobook at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. North Korea invents the iPad. A North Korean company has launched a new tablet and they've come up with an interesting name for it – the iPad. <laughs> no kidding. Of course, this product, created by a partially state-owned company called Ryan Hung, is very different from the Apple iPad that we know. The Android operating system is far more limited and users have access to only 40 pre-installed apps, including a calculator, a health encyclopedia, and an agricultural program. It'll log in to the North Korean intranet and has 1 gig of RAM, 8 gig of storage, and a 1.2 gigahertz quad-core processor. Of course, copyright lawyers will no doubt be interested in such a flagrant abuse of Apple's trademarks, but it's kind of hard to believe anybody with Pyongyang is going to care about that. In fact, North Korea has ripped off Western names and ideas several times before, including their own version of Netflix, which generally shows nothing but programs about Kim Jong-un. Nike says it'll continue to endorse Tiger Woods following his arrest for DUI. He'll be part of their new Just Don't Do It line. A New Hampshire Police Department has issued a new public service announcement with a message that reminds citizens it is illegal to possess recreational marijuana in New Hampshire, even if you only smoke it in Massachusetts. The idea for the somewhat humorous announcement came after the arrest of 27-year-old Selkett Taylor, who was initially pulled over for using his cell phone while driving. But then the officers saw a bag of marijuana in a cup holder. Taylor's excuse was that he only smoked it in Massachusetts where recreational marijuana is now legal. Well, along with his creative excuse, he also gave police quite the mugshot, where he appears to be laughing hysterically. The mugshot was used with the new public service announcement. Donald Trump has pulled the United States out of the landmark Paris Climate Agreement. As a result, I think it's now legal to smoke in the White House. In an effort to compete with Amazon, Walmart is testing a program that allows store workers to deliver packages ordered on the store's website after they finish their shifts on the way home. The company says the step will cut shipping costs, speed the delivery of packages, and allow workers to earn additional compensation. You know, seeing as most Walmart workers are so underpaid they have to deliver pizzas as a second job anyway, at least we know the Walmart delivery people will have experience. A psychologist says the average person is keeping 13 secrets. And for the record, most of them are about you. A Massachusetts coffee shop owner says he received a cease and desist letter from Dunkin' Donuts claiming trademark infringement for using a play on the chain's catchphrase. Steve Kopoulos says he added window art on his Mike's Coffee Shop in North Attenborough, which said, North now runs on Mike's. While he expected a few laughs from customers, Steve says he was surprised to find the letter from the Canton, Massachusetts-based coffee shop chain claiming he was infringing on their America Runs on Duncan slogan and his variation implied an affiliation. Well, so he took down the sign, explaining he wants to be the exact opposite of a corporate coffee chain. Of course, the bigger question is, why does a guy named Steve have a coffee shop called Mike's? A 30-year-old man was arrested on suspicion of murder after three dead bodies were found in a Liverpool home where John Lennon once lived. Well, how do we know John Lennon didn't do it? The New York Daily News printed a headline last week that harkened back to their legendary mid-1970s headline after President Ford refused to bail out then-financially-strapped New York City. That headline read, Ford to New York, Drop Dead. Well, last week's headline screamed out, Trump to the world, drop dead. But then this is also the same paper that had the headline, Headless Body Found in Topless Bar, so it's kind of hard to take them seriously about anything. The nuclear reactor at Three Mile Island will reportedly be shut down in 2019. Okay, raise your hands if you already thought it was shut down. Yeah, I mean, me, me too. A contest named simply Who Can Drink More Vodka? was organized in the city of Volgandosk, Russia, by a local supermarket. A total of 40 men took part in downed vodka which had been put in buckets. Five participants had to be rushed to intensive care, and the quote-unquote winner died from alcohol poisoning after downing an estimated three quarts. 
Okay, here's a tip for you. Entering a contest called Who Can Drink More Vodka is never a wise move. A Delaware-sized iceberg is reportedly on the verge of splitting off from the Antarctica shelf. Man, it's almost as if it was waiting for Trump to announce relieving the Paris Climate Agreement so it could make a run to freedom. Kathy Griffin is said to be disappointed that CNN's Anderson Cooper chose not to stand by her after she was fired from the New Year's Eve broadcast with Cooper, which they've done together now for 10 years. Oh, yeah, Kathy, have you not seen the recordings of that yearly disaster? Anderson spent a solid 10 years looking mortified at your antics. Police in Washington state arrested two Papa John's employees Friday for allegedly selling cocaine out of the restaurant. A King County Sheriff's Office spokesperson says they'd order pizza and go out and wait in the parking lot. The employee would bring the pizza out and in the box would be the cocaine. Apparently, the code phrase was to say, give it extra olives when ordering. Authorities seized cocaine, ecstasy, marijuana, oxycodone, LSD, meth, and $28,000 in cash. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Sixth grader Ananya Vinay outspelled 291 spellers from across the country and the globe to become this year's Scripps Spelling Bee champion. Ananya Vinay won by correctly spelling the words Ananya Vinay. A woman in Germany who hid her life savings in a vacuum cleaner dust bag just because she doesn't trust banks? Well, she nearly lost all of it when her cleaning woman threw the bag out. The woman managed to get her $113,000 back after she called the local trash collection service, which sent a team to sift through tons of garbage to find the bag. Not only does she not trust banks, now she doesn't trust cleaning ladies or vacuums. Google is facing a $9 billion European Union fine for rigging search results. You can find out more by Googling Google is Innocent. Kellogg's is closing several distribution centers and laying off a thousand workers. So if anybody's in need of a cartoon tiger to promote their product, well, there's one standing in the unemployment line. And he is great! New Westminster Animal Shelter in New Westminster, British Columbia, Canada received a very generous donation from the estate of a teacher and animal lover. And what's strange is that the late Daryl Mutz never even visited the shelter. But the New Westminster Animal Shelter is grateful anyway for Mutz's $275,000 donation. Now, I wonder if Daryl was an animal lover like I'm a lover of kids. You know, I enjoy them, but only in short doses and on a case-by-case -case basis. Lindsay Lohan is launching her own jewelry line. The jewelry is expected to be very impressive and desirable in the beginning, but then quickly lose its luster and long for the days when it was relevant. An American Airlines jet trying to take off in San Antonio veered off the runway and became stuck in the mud. The pilot said he had no choice – it was either that or collide with Harrison Ford. A brush fire on the side of a Phoenix freeway didn't burn for long thanks to the help of an unlikely hero – Jared Ayton. He's a carpet cleaner who was on his way home from a job when he spotted the fire burning on the side of the road. He thought, man, I wish I could help or do something. And then he remembered that he had a tank full of water inside his carpet cleaning van. He pulled over and got to work, using what was left of the water. By the time fire crews arrived, the flames were out. Once the firefighters arrived, Jared told them, I've done your job, now you do mine. Here's the address to Mrs. Newman's house. She has some dog poop stains on her carpet. Get to it! Newspaper circulation has dropped to a 77-year low. Well, duh. I mean, home delivery of the New York Times is over $250 a year. That's a lot of dough just for something to line the birdcage and litter box with. A new book about Saddam Hussein's last days in captivity reveals he was a big fan of the music of Mary J. Blige. Wow, that, that's got to make Mary J. feel all kinds of creepy. A new study says pesticides on food may cause damage to the brain. So it took a study to figure that out? What, what was, was there ever a point where somebody thought, oh, uh, it'll kill bugs, but we'll be fine? There's a dirty little secret about hanging out at the International Space Station that NASA is finally talking about. 
It seems the cost of transporting water up there is so cost prohibitive, about $48,000 per liter, that NASA engineers had to find cheaper ways of taking H2O into space. Now, fortunately for science, somebody figured out how to do it. Unfortunately for the astronauts, it's turning their own pee into drinking water. Now, I know it's a survival thing, but I would be demanding a lot of Kool-Aid mix to mask the reality of that. A new Dr. Seuss museum has opened in Springfield, Massachusetts. Although I think they made a mistake with the green eggs and ham vending machine. Wonder Woman made $223 million around the globe over the weekend. Stateside, it was the biggest opening for a female director ever, and the only film in the new DC movie universe worth spending a buck to see. In Tennessee, 19-year-old Lucinda Luna is dead after she was accidentally shot by her boyfriend with a gun her father gave him as a graduation gift. It seems the boyfriend, 18-year-old Brennan Fields, had taken apart the pistol and put it back together without realizing there was still a live round in the chamber. Fields was reportedly playing with the gun when it fired and the bullet struck Luna in the stomach while she was lying on a couch across the room from him. Luna died early the following day at an area hospital. Okay, now what kind of father gives his daughter's boyfriend a gun as a graduation gift? Especially if that boyfriend doesn't know any better than to play with a gun, loaded or not. Wouldn't a more appropriate graduation gift be, oh, I don't know, a prepaid gift card to Walmart or Applebee's? I mean, if the kid likes guns, buy him the latest Grand Theft Auto. You don't buy the kid your daughter is dating a gun. A rumor says Kraft Heinz is planning on buying Colgate. Well, that's going to make for some disgusting-tasting toothpaste. Or will it be toothpaste-flavored ketchup? Either way, ugh. The first Nutella Cafe opened its doors this week in Chicago. Chicago knows that it can buy Nutella in stores, but it's so used to spending money it doesn't have, it's just habit now. A lawyer in Mexico is planning to launch a Trump brand of toilet paper with 30% of the profits going towards financing programs that support migrants and Mexicans deported from the U.S. You know, if that stuff's available here in the United States, it is going to fly off the shelves! At least four major law firms have reportedly backed away from talks with the White House to help defend President Trump in the escalating federal Russia probe. Why? Well, they're said to be worried that our headstrong commander-in-chief won't listen to their counsel. One lawyer familiar with the talks tells Yahoo News the concerns were, quote, the guy won't pay attention and he won't listen, unquote. So now Trump is talking to that annoying ambulance-chasing lawyer dude who advertises during Dr. Phil. George Clooney is a new father. He and his wife Amal this week welcomed their twins, a boy and a girl, Ella and Alexander, into the world. You know, I'm wondering, though, if this might be a fake news story because I have, I have a hard time believing that a Hollywood couple would name their babies something normal, like Ella and Alexander. An NSA contractor named Reality Winner – yes, that's her real name, Reality Winner – has been charged with leaking classified government documents. Surprisingly, her alleged accomplice, document leaker, has not been charged. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he is not a fan of President Trump's tweets which I'm sure will be the subject of the Donald's next tweet. Uber has hired a Harvard expert to help with their leadership problems. Now That'll hopefully give them a lift. The mayor of London is calling for the UK to cancel their scheduled visit from President Trump. Trump plans on smoothing things over, though, by giving the mayor a can of Pepsi. Police in Vail, Colorado are warning homeowners to bear-proof their homes after one bear was caught on a security video playing the piano inside an apartment last week. No kidding! The tenant phoned police to report a burglary after returning to what looked like a ransacked apartment. A responding officer determined the culprit was likely a black bear that entered through an open kitchen window looking for food. But it wasn't until the resident checked her security camera and found a honey of a video showing not only was there indeed a bear, but he seemed to be very interested in the apartment piano, and he pawed the keyboard. Play us a song, you're the piano bear! Play us a song tonight! Seattle is the latest city to impose a sugary sales tax on soft drinks. Diet drinks are not taxed extra. 
Man, Seattle's already full of depression and suicidal thoughts. You're going to tax one of the only legal vices that help people cheer up? Yeah, great plan. In Utah last Sunday, an 8-year-old Nebraska girl and her entire soccer team were disqualified from a tournament because organizers thought she was a he. Which is stupid because, as we all know, real boys don't play soccer. A Florida mom has given birth to a big baby boy, 13 pounds 5 ounces. When the doctor slapped him, he slapped back and forced the doctor to give him his lunch money. A Birmingham police sergeant bit into an Arby's sandwich and found a 1-inch bolt inside. But then he chewed it up and spit out bullets. That's what happens in the cartoons. Emptying trash cans and dumpsters in Bogota, Colombia's Jose Alberto Gutierrez one day found a copy of the classic novel Anna Karenina and kept it. Well, that was 20 years ago, and the garbage man has continued to collect Bogota's discarded books, amassing thousands that he has used to create a free library. Thanks to additional book donations, Gutierrez's library has swelled to 25,000 books. Now he needs somebody to throw out a building so he has somewhere to put them all. A new report says it is cheaper to send a kid to Harvard than it is to send him to a California prison. And it looks a lot better on his resume. In a new trend, more women are using marijuana during pregnancy. <laughs> is it any wonder why we're having more fat babies being born? The moms are always having the munchies. Kim Kardashian says she is done with Caitlyn Jenner. Now, my theory is it's to avoid the whole question of should I still buy her a Father's Day gift? A German man tried to leave his house for work this week only to find his front door had been bricked up. He was exiting his residence near Frankfurt and found somebody had built a wall in front of his entrance. He had to tear it down in order to leave his property. Man, you got to admit, though, I mean that, that's a whole lot more creative than the whole post-it notes all over your car thing. A study says two hours of video games a week makes young people more employable. So that should make the kid who lives next door to me 15 times more employable than the other candidates. Contrary to conventional wisdom, drinking alcohol is not enough to make you fat or even gain weight, as long as you drink in moderation. Nutrition Reviews reports that a team of researchers examined 31 different studies on the topic and concluded that moderate drinking doesn't have a strong association with weight gain or a high body mass index. So good news, you no longer have a beer belly. Bad news, you are still morbidly obese. Meanwhile, a new study warns that even moderate drinking can damage our brains. This news could not come at a worse time with parents everywhere having to deal with kids being home from school. A Russian man recently proposed to his girlfriend, a nurse, by hiding the engagement ring that he bought her in his stomach wound. He asked her to change the dressing on the wound, and while doing so, she found the ring. The woman said yes to the proposal but washed the ring before putting it on. Man, you know, there's, there's nothing more romantic than hiding a wedding ring in your infected boil hole. A Utah woman is accused of pulling two of her seven-year-old son's teeth out with pliers in a Walmart bathroom. See, and people say Obamacare is dead. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. And click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when I post new videos. And if you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on your own social media. Find even more weird news that I didn't have time for on the Facebook page at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos!